All right, we're going to go over notes number eight today, starting uh, our new chapter two. And we're going to start simply by talking about integers and the number line. <coughs> so one of the things we talk about throughout this class is um, and by the way, this is Lesson 2-1 and Lesson 2-2, if you want to watch the Pearson um, tutorials. <coughs> we talk about lots of different numbers and categories that they're in. So again, as we're in new chapters, usually the first couple um, lessons have more vocabulary than the rest of them. So we're going to start today by giving you some definitions, and then how would we see that word or that idea played out in homework. So we're going to start with the word opposites. And opposites are numbers uh, that are the same distance from zero. But, on opposite sides, oops, sorry, oops, of zero. Okay. <clears throat> so obviously, four to the right, four to the left of zero. In order to indicate what direction four is going, we put a sign attached to it. If we're going to the right on a number line, we're going in a positive direction. If we're going to the left um, of zero on a number line, we're going in a negative direction. Now, there's one number and one number only that does not have an opposite. Can you guess who he is? Bingo, zero. So I'm going to put him in a different color, that zero has no opposite. I have seen kids write negative zero before on a test, and that actually doesn't exist. So an example of opposites would be four and negative four. So you're going to see the same number, but what you're going to see is opposite signs. Okay, so let's talk about integers. So, so far, when we've been talking about numbers, we've talked about natural numbers. Those are the numbers we naturally count by, 1, 2, 3, 4, so no fractions, no decimals. And then whole numbers includes all the natural numbers, but it also throws in 0. So integers are whole numbers and their opposites. So that 0 to positive infinity, infinity, but now we also include the opposites. So now we're allowed to get in the negatives. So the two groups of integers are positive integers. Which are to the right of zero. And we have negative integers, which are to the left of zero. OK? So let's go and do an example where we would just do a basic knowledge of what are integers. So directions are going to say, name the integer. So what whole number value or its opposite, that is suggested uh, by each situation. So they're going to give us a situation 
and our job is to figure out how to write an interpretation of it in mathematically. So it says Julia has a debt of $12. So you have to ask yourself, is that a positive situation or is that a negative situation? <clears throat> and if you have a debt, that means you owe somebody. So it's something you don't have, so we would use negative. Now one thing that I would prefer is that if your original problem has a label, that you would also give the label to your answer. I think the book doesn't include the labels, but I'd like you to. And then the next one is the halfback. made a gain of 8 yards. So again, our <clears throat> question is, is that a positive situation or a negative situation? To the halfback, he gained, he got something. So that is a positive 8 yards. So you, you can do it without the plus sign or you can actually throw it in and make sure that somebody knows beyond a reasonable doubt that's exactly what you meant. Okay? Alright, uh, we're going to talk about integers. I mean integers, sorry. We're going to talk about inequalities. And we're just going to talk about some real basic ones so that you can compare things. And again, the whole idea of why is this including the number line, because it's just giving you an idea of what a number line looks like, what direction is positive, what direction is negative, what values would be positive, what values would be negative. Is there such a thing as a negative number? No, it just is the absence of something, so on and so forth. So we have two inequality symbols, one with the open first and then the point, the other one with the point first and then the open. So when you are open first, you say is greater than, and here's the reason why. If you remember back to elementary school, your teacher always talked about the hungry alligator. Is greater man? Oh boy. Hello. Let's try that again. Is greater than. So they're talking about the hungry alligator, and then he was so hungry, he would, arr, arr, arr. he'd always have his big, huge mouth open towards a larger number. So if we have 4 is greater than 2, <coughs> the alligator is going to make his choice of always opening towards the larger number. So if the first thing you see is the opening, that tells you the first number you see has to be the greater number, because that alligator is super hungry, and he's going to want to eat as much as possible. Now if you see the point first, you read it as is less than. So you would say something 2 is less than 4. Now notice the open is still towards the 4 because again with inequalities we're always going to open to the larger number and point at the smaller number. Kind of the middle school concept. You guys like picking on little kids. I don't get it but that's what I always hear. Okay, <clears throat> so how would we use this? Um, you know, I think I'm not going to have enough room, so I'm going to go to the next one. So our directions would be something like, write a true sentence. So now you're going to be comparing two values. And you want to choose the correct inequality symbol so that what you've written actually is true. Uh, write a true sentence using either the greater than or the less than symbol. Sorry. So on this one, we've got a negative 7, we have a blank, and then we have a 3. And we need to figure out What's the relationship between negative 7 and 3? Well, this one's super easy. Positive and a negative, hands down, look at a number line. Whichever number is farther to the right has to be positive. So without even really stressing on this too much, you know that the relationship is always going to be open towards the positive number. So we have negative 7 is less than negative, or is less than positive 3. 
Now, um, I'm not going to give you an example of two positives because you guys should be, be pretty familiar of how to compare two positives. But where it gets a little tricky is if you have two negatives. Okay, so again, the guy that's considered to be the larger value is going to be the guy that's going to be um, farther to the right. So if you envision that little number line to help you out here, so I'm going to create a little easy one. And both of these are negative, so here's 0. The weird thing about the negatives, here's your negative 18, here is your negative 25. So which one is going to be closer? or further to the right, well it turns out it's going to be negative 18. So we would say that negative 18 is greater than negative 25. Okay, So we're hitting a whole bunch of just different ways of looking at values. The next one deals with absolute value. And it says that absolute value is a number's distance from zero oops um, on a number line it doesn't say what direction because direction indicates positive or negative direction it just asks what is its distance? How far is it from zero? Now I don't know about you but I have never seen a measuring tape a tape measure, a ruler that had negative numbers on it. And there's a reason. There is no such thing as a negative length. Negative length doesn't indicate a value. It indicates a direction. It could be something that's below a starting point, okay, to the left of a starting point. So it, the symbol that goes with this it's like two goalposts, and then there's something in between, and we're just going to let a variable hang out. And this means, so if you see that, you say the absolute value of x. And that's how you read that. And there's only two possibilities for the absolute value. And you might say, whoa, 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 whoa. How can there be two possibilities? It's got to be positive, right? Well, this is a bit of a trick question. The absolute value can either be positive or zero. Now, there's your trick question. Because zero, remember, is neither positive nor negative, it's just zero. That's why we have to distinguish him from being positive, because he's just, he's like the Switzerland of the number world, he's neutral, okay? So you're gonna have a new set of directions that are gonna ask you to uh, find the absolute value. So let's see if we can squeeze that on here. It's, this is such easy stuff. And so the only thing we need to remember, I have the absolute value of 12, and the answer would be positive 12. So no absolute value once I've taken it, right? The symbol goes away. I'm asking how far from 0 is 12? It's 12 away. Well, what about how far is negative 7 from 0? Well, guess what? It's 7 away. So, and again, remember, original problem equals answer is minimum I should see on all homework. Okay, let's go on. We're almost there, almost done. So let's talk about a new group of numbers. So far, we've only talked about whole numbers. Let's talk about rational numbers. And... 
Here is something that I find interesting. Right here, let's see what color do I want. You look at the first five letters of the word rational, it spells the word ratio. And a ratio um, shows the comparison of two numbers using division. So here is the definition for a rational number. Any number uh, that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers sorry I'm having some problems here there's two integers a over B where B cannot equal to zero. Okay? This includes integers, so positive and negative whole numbers. It includes fractions, and remember mixed numbers can be written as an improper fraction, so that's all included under fractions, and it includes decimals. So that pretty much makes up all the numbers that you have studied pretty much your entire math classes from kindergarten on. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, first off, let's talk about the notion here that it's any number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. So what that says is A, B are not fractions or decimals. And I bring this up because I see kids who try to do this process and they leave a decimal in a numerator. It's impossible. Okay. So A and B are not, uh, they're only integers, they're not fractions. Okay. Next I want to bring up is why do they tell us B can't equal zero? And the reason why they tell us that is because this is the one thing mathematicians will never be able to do, and that's to divide by zero. So you may never... Oh, hello, maybe. If I learn how to spell what I'm trying to say. May never divide by zero. It's never ever going to be done. You're going to learn about all sorts of stuff. You're going to learn to take square roots of negative numbers eventually. But you'll never be able to divide by zero because you can't take something and break it into no groups. By definition it's going to be at least in one group. Okay, So that's really important that you understand these two ideas. So basically if you're given a value and say show that it's a rational number, you're going to change it into a fancy fraction. Okay, that's all it is. And that brings us to this set of directions. And the and again, I, I take the directions straight out of your homework so you understand what it says. Show that each can be written as the ratio of two integers. So it says leave it as a fraction. So this is the one time, the one time, that I'm perfectly happy with you guys leaving one in a denominator. And this is the only time. Signs don't really matter. Okay. So first thing you do is you create a fraction. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do is start by taking this number and putting it over 1. But this problem right now breaks the first rule that we can't have fractions or decimals for A or B. So think to yourself, what could I do to negative 
to get rid of the decimal. And that would be, I need to move the decimal over right once, which means I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 10. Okay, so if you do that, your answer is negative 143 over 10. And that's your final answer. That does not look like a zero, does it? Let's try that again. Okay, so no decimals allowed. All right, let's try one more. Another decimal, since the other ones are pretty simple to handle. It's easy to take a mixed number and make it a fraction. It's easy to take a whole number and make it a fraction, so not a problem. So let's try that again. We're going to just start by taking our value and putting it over 1, but again, that breaks the first rule that we cannot have fractions or decimals as either one of those values. So again, we need to ask ourselves, what can we multiply 4.5 by to get rid of the decimal? And we would be multiplying by 10, top and bottom. So our answer is 45 over 10. Now, I'm going to tell you I don't like this answer. And if you think about it, you probably can see why. I don't like this answer because it's not reduced to lowest terms. So I would like you to go ahead and simplify your fraction. And 45 divided by 5 is 9. 10 divided by 5 is 2. That's the answer I would like to see on your tests and homework. Okay. Last, we're going to go visit an idea we already talked about, uh, but now we're going to apply it uh, some other rules that you probably have learned before. And again, we're going to do that comparison, so use either, and then greater than or less, or less than, to write a true statement. So we're just going to compare two values. But remember, we've already done it with integers, so now we're going to add those rational numbers. Okay. So here are a couple of examples. Number one, what if I wanted to compare two decimals? Okay. Well, here's the strategy I use. I take the first number and put it on top. Actually, let's change colors here. I'm going to take the first number, keep him on top, and I'm going to take the second number, and I'm going to look, put him on the bottom. And when I'm comparing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the largest place value column and look for a difference. They both have a 4, so that means they're of equal value at this point. So that didn't help me, so I go over one column at a time, just to the right once. And I notice I have a 6 in the tenths column versus a 2. Well, the larger the number, the larger the value. So that 6 is larger than the 2, which allows you to conclude that the 4.62 would be greater than the 4.26. All right, fair enough. And then the last one is a little quickie shortcut to how can you compare two fractions. Now, if the signs are different, it's easy. The positive one is greater. If the signs are the same, either they're both positive or both negative, then here's a shortcut you can use. Okay, So the shortcut says this. Multiply on a diagonal. 6 times 7. The product is 42. You write it over whatever numerator you multiplied by. All right, go the other direction. 8 times 5 is 40, and so I write 40 over the 5. So I go and I look at 40 versus 42, and what I notice is that 40 is less than 42. That tells me that 5 6 is less than 7 eighths. So how is this working? Well, what do you need in order to compare two fractions? Well, they need to have something that makes sense. So the something we're looking for is are, do they have the same denominators? I can't really compare things if their denominators aren't the same. Now, most of the time we're looking for the least common denominator. That gives us smaller numbers to multiply by, and it's easier. But in the case of this shortcut, all I do to figure out the denominator is to multiply the denominators together. What that allows me to do is to create 
a common denominator. Now I need to change each value, top and bottom, by that, uh, whatever it takes to get to that. So 6 times 8 is 48, so 5 times 8 is 40. I guess I should go on, uh, let's try that again. I'm going to go with back to the colors I had there. Oops. So let's try this again. Okay, so let's go with blue. So 6 times 8 is 48, so 5 times 8 is going to be 40. Notice, same number. Now I'm going to go green. And then 8 times 6 is 48, so 7 times 6 is 42. Notice, same number. So now it's real easy. When the denominators are the same, we just simply look at the numerators, and 40 is less than 42. And that's how I get that. Okay, so this is called cross products. So first thing we do is do cross products. I'm remembering to put the product over its. Um, numerator. So what numerator did you multiply by to get that product? And now all you do is compare the numerators. Now I'm going to abbreviate num because I'm running out of space. Okay? So there you go. Have fun with your homework.